Tomorrow's New Year's Eve, and Shenzhen's turned into a ghost town again. No cars, no people. The whole coastal city shopping center is deserted. Today's the 28th of the last lunar month, and here we are at the supermarket. Look how bleak it is. Last year, this place was packed, with long lines at the checkout. Now, it's all gone. It's the second day of the Lunar New Year, a time traditionally spent visiting relatives and friends, but the roads are unexpectedly empty. Where has all of the festive spirit in Shenzhen gone? Where do Shenzhen folks celebrate their New Year? Streets empty, stores closed, cars gone. Shenzhen turns into a ghost town during the New Year. A netizen captured the real scene at Shenzhen's Xuyan bus station. The video shows many stores near the station have closed, leaving the area deserted. Next to the bus station is Old Xuyan Street, with the entrance to Wanlian City Plaza, which has also shut down, along with all its stores. Wanlian City Plaza, once bustling and prosperous, now has its entrances sealed, indicating it has been closed for a long time. It's February 4th, 2024, 1 p.m., and Old Shuryan Street is really quiet. Not many people around, even though it's Sunday. Maybe many have gone back to their hometowns for the New Year. Another netizen reminisced about the Chinese New Year travel rush years ago, when Longhua bus station in Shenzhen was crowded with people. In contrast, the New Year travel rush in 2024 feels starkly cold. Despite the sparse crowd of travelers, the scene outside Longhua bus station presents a different picture, hosting Shenzhen's largest recruitment hub, a first stop for many outsiders seeking employment. On ordinary days, it's common to see jobless individuals with nowhere to stay, sleeping directly on the ground. Surprisingly, even during the new year, many people remain. The video shows that as the year ends, the number of homeless people has increased. Instead of going home, they choose to sleep on the streets near Longhua bus station, facing daily eviction by security guards. I'm currently at the Longhua bus station in Shenzhen. In such cold weather, aren't they cold sleeping on the ground? The man filming the video mentioned that the government distributed instant noodles to these homeless individuals to stave off hunger. Not just the unemployed, but many workers in Shenzhen have not gone home for the new year. They live a challenging life. The man in the video shared his experience. He worked four hours of casual work the previous night, doing simple cleaning work at a hotel in Shenzhen's Futian district, earning 100 yuan. Although not much, it was enough to feed him. He currently lives in a relatively cheap rented room shared with many others, paying only 20 yuan a day. The video reveals his low quality of life and financial struggles. He described the local job market, noting casual day jobs paying over 20 or 30 yuan per hour, advising friends looking for work to hurry as wages might decrease soon. He also mentioned that many choose to stay in Shenzhen over the new year due to lack of earnings or other considerations. Observers note that this year's New Year atmosphere is markedly different from previous years. The 2024 Chinese New Year has seen fewer people visiting relatives or going out to play cards. Social media groups are unusually quiet, with fewer people handing out red envelopes. Statistics show that in 2017, the total number of WeChat red packets reached 14.2 billion, but by 2024, this number dropped to 5.27 billion. In seven years, the number of WeChat red packets decreased by nearly 9 billion, prompting people to wonder what caused such a significant change. Some people also pointed out that this year, fewer are posting their New Year's Eve dinners on social media, though more are traveling home for the holiday. Relatives are less eager to pressure for marriage or children, focusing instead on welcoming the God of Wealth. People setting off fireworks and displaying affection has become less common. The changes show a deeper reflection on reality. Three years of severe pandemic measures by the Chinese Communist Party have severely impacted the economy and people's livelihoods. Many have lost jobs, struggling to pay mortgages or car loans. Furthermore, the Chinese stock market's continuous plunge at the beginning of the year 
has caused significant losses to ordinary investors, with some facing bankruptcy. People have come to realize the importance of financial stability. A man named Da Zui encountered a homeless person at Longhua Bus Station in Shenzhen, penniless and without a place to stay. Da Zui learned that the man, feeling unwell, had been sleeping at the bus station for several days, finding life very tough. Having recently arrived in Shenzhen by high-speed train from his hometown, he hoped to find work but faced challenges. He had worked in Shanghai for half a year, but found job hunting in Shenzhen difficult. He had secured a job, but was let go by his employer for being deemed inefficient and too old. On the day of filming, the fifth day of the Lunar New Year, no places were hiring, leaving him hungry and sleeping on the streets. Da Zui shared that the homeless man had only a bag, worn-out clothes, high prescription glasses, and struggled to sleep in the cold night at the bus station. Da Zui, concerned for him, inquired about his situation and plans, then gave him a cheap box meal. He hoped his actions offered some warmth to this struggling man. Currently, China's labor force faces employment challenges, with many workers worried about job security during the new year. Several have expressed concerns that their employers could notify them of layoffs or shift cancellations at any time. A 42-year-old employee at an electric toothbrush manufacturing plant mentioned that business had been slow over the past year, with most products exported to the U.S. and Europe. Last year's sales dropped by 30 percent, making life tougher than before. With 2024 expected to be even more challenging. Ms. Nia, who works at a pet hospital, said the hospital had expanded rapidly, but was forced to close many branches after the pandemic outbreak, resulting in layoffs. Remaining employees face reduced salaries, with many colleagues experiencing at least a 1,000 yuan decrease in monthly income. Others in Shenzhen stated they now understand why so many have left the city this year. Shenzhen in 2023 is no longer the same. The post-pandemic influx of job seekers has led to an oversupply, making job hunting extremely difficult. After contacting thousands of companies online, submitting hundreds of resumes, and attending dozens of interviews, they still couldn't find suitable work. Without earning a penny and facing daily expenses, they wonder how they can survive. Many Chinese note that although Shenzhen is a first-tier city, finding a job is challenging with available positions mostly in e-commerce sales, customer service, collections, or loans. Moreover, contrary to experts' claim of an average salary of twelve thousand, many jobs only pay five to six thousand, making dreams of owning a home or car in Shenzhen far-fetched. With housing prices reaching millions, it would take the savings of two generations to afford a down payment. With a monthly income of just five to six thousand yuan, many in Shenzhen are left with no choice but to live in partition rooms or urban villages. There exists a group of people in Shenzhen who neither smoke nor drink, opting instead to cook at home after work to save on the cost of takeout. It seems the city's vibrancy, its culture, and tourist attractions bear no relevance to them, as the struggle of day-to-day -day living leaves little room to engage with these aspects of life. The lack of jobs is because, following a three-year pandemic and subsequent reopening, China's economic growth in 2023 fell short of expectations. Reports indicate that the Chinese government's aggressive foreign policy has directly impacted the export market, with a hostile stance towards the West, leading Western nations to significantly reduce their reliance on Chinese suppliers. This has resulted in many factories engaging in fierce price wars to secure market shares, especially as China's producer price index has been on a decline for 15 consecutive months. Reducing profit margins for businesses and threatening workers' incomes and employment. This presents new challenges for China, the world's second-largest economy, already troubled by real estate crisis and debt contraction. Despite official claims from the Chinese government that the country's economic growth rate reached 5.2 percent last year. The perception among newly unemployed graduates, homeowners facing devaluation in the property market, and workers experiencing income reductions is more akin to economic contraction. 
Recently, the Chinese government has intensified efforts to boost economic confidence, attempting to calm the unrest in financial and real estate markets. Even though the People's Daily published an article on February 2nd claiming an optimistic atmosphere pervades the nation, the reality is less rosy. A small dredging company owner, Mr. Wu, with six boats and over 10 employees, exemplifies the current sentiment. Far from content with life, he faces uncertainty about the future in 2024. Mr. Wu mentions facing tight financial constraints, with the post-pandemic economic landscape proving challenging. The widespread issue of capital shortage, if unresolved, could make any investment in the new year difficult. He may need to shut down his company. Observers also know that Shenzhen has entered a winter period for manufacturing, with even well-established factories struggling to survive. Ted K. Wasing Electronic in Shenzhen, a renowned toy OEM that operated for 30 years with a workforce of 2,000 at its peak, is among those that have shut down. The company, severely affected by COVID-19 and the current adverse economic conditions, faced significant operational difficulties. It operated at a loss for an extended period before announcing closure and staff dissolution. Despite efforts to raise funds, the company could not reverse its fortunes. It has committed to paying outstanding salaries to employees and management, with the government auctioning equipment and items in order to pay compensation as per legal procedures. Many people point out that Shenzhen is now under more pressure than in previous years, with countless businesses and factories closing. Last year, many factories offered no overtime, leaving workers to earn just the minimum wage or even less due to the lack of orders, making even affording meals a challenge. One social media blogger shared that his brother, working in Bao'an Shenzhen, faces such circumstances, now reliant on family support for living expenses. They advise those who have not yet returned to Shenzhen post-New Year if they have better options not to come back. For those already there, finding any job is better than none, given the hardships of life. In the current economic climate of Shenzhen, not only ordinary workers, but also the faux middle class are feeling the pinch. Reports indicate that Shenzhen's faux middle class has started selling secondhand items on online platforms, such as Xianyu, to supplement household expenses. All these are indicating a comprehensive collapse of this group. For instance, Jimboree, an early education institution operating for 21 years in Shenzhen, heavily promoted its services in front of the city's largest mall, Wanda Plaza, attracting many middle-class families. However, it abruptly announced closure the following day, leaving parents who had paid 40,000 yuan in training fees in tears. Additionally, at the start of the month, Shenzhen Dingyifeng Financial Consulting Company Limited collapsed, resulting in significant losses for thousands of middle-class families who had invested. The piano market suffered too, with the full middle class shifting focus from pursuing elegance to addressing more practical life needs. Notably, the Saisika Auto Accessories Company Limited in Dongguan quietly absconded, leading banks to tow away showroom cars overnight, victimizing many prospective car owners. Luxury brands once favored by the full middle class have lost their appeal with a shift towards purchasing practical goods. As the phenomenon of the full middle class reverting to poverty intensifies, significant changes are observed in Shenzhen's real estate market. Previously, this group might have pursued luxury real estate to display their status. However, with changing economic conditions and increased financial pressures, there's a shift towards more practical and cost-effective property purchases. Moreover, on the eve of the Chinese New Year, Shenzhen announced a relaxation of purchasing restrictions. Despite efforts by sales offices to attract customers, overall foot traffic remained low. Specifically, the Shenzhen government announced policies to ease restrictions for both residents and non-residents buying property in the city. Shenzhen residents can now purchase property upon obtaining residency, while the social security payment requirement for non-residents has been reduced from five to three years. 
This marks the first relaxation of Shenzhen's housing purchase restrictions since the new eight measures for market regulation were introduced on July 15, 2020. However, despite the market receiving this strong policy stimulus, Shenzhen's new home sales volume began to decline gradually from February 6. According to data from the Shenzhen Real Estate Information Platform, the daily sales volume of new homes in Shenzhen has shown a downward trend since the implementation of the new policy, especially during the New Year period. The sluggishness in Shenzhen's property market is not a recent phenomenon. Over the past two years, real estate inventory has remained high. In 2023, the area of new residential properties increased by 28 percent, with inventory reaching a record high of 5.2 million square meters. Data from the Shenzhen Real Estate Information Platform on February 2nd indicates that in January, the city saw 1,391 transactions of secondhand residential properties, a 10.7 percent decline year on year. For the new home market, January 2024 saw 1,788 residential property transactions in Shenzhen, a 9.8% increase year-on-year, but a 30% decrease from the previous month. Despite the government's relaxation of purchasing restrictions, netizens remain pessimistic about the property market, with some bluntly labeling Chinese real estate as the biggest pitfall. Locals say... From the peak to today, Shenzhen's property prices have dropped a lot. Ordinary housing dropped by 30 percent, school district homes by 45 percent, Dongguan at least 50 percent, Huizhou 60 percent, Zhongshan and Zhuhai by 50 percent, and Nansha, Guangzhou by 40 percent. Current homeowners are fearful, and investors who entered the market in previous years are trapped, with down payments gone and monthly mortgages to pay. Property prices have returned to the levels of 2017 and 2018. Such minor policies have little impact on the current market because prospective buyers are now very cautious, fearing further declines. There is no market stability and those who bought properties in the past few years are trapped. All these are harsh lessons. An article by The Economist commented that as the real estate crisis drags the Chinese economy into deflation, it triggers numerous crises. However, the downward pressure on China's economy primarily stems from hastily formulated policies by Beijing in recent years and mishandling responses to the tech industry, COVID-19, and especially indecision in the real estate crisis. These factors have led to a loss of investor confidence, sparking a trend of foreign investors withdrawing from the Chinese market, severely impacting the economy. The Economist also noted that Chinese leaders' attempts to control information and harshly crack down on economic criticism have exacerbated external doubts and concerns about the real state of China's economy. The reality is that Chinese leaders are unlikely to relax their grip on the economy, becoming a significant barrier to economic recovery.